you got an STM scanning tunneling microscope in order to probe the surface topography with an extreme resolution. You see now the STM which is placed in the center of the chamber in order to be positioned close to the sample. So this is a low temperature scanning tunneling microscope. What you see here is the Kraustite, which is uh, made for cooling the instrument, which is placed into this uh, UHV chamber. The idea of the microscope is to bring the sample close to the tip. Due to the extreme sensitivity to, of the instrument to the, the distance between the tip and the sample, all the vibration have to be damped in order for the instrument to work. So the instrument has to be placed far from any source of noise. When we apply a tunnel voltage between the tip and the sample, a tunnel current will flow between the two electrodes. And the monitoring of this uh, tunnel current is uh, able to perform surface topography of the sample. Let me tell you how you can use the scanning tunneling microscope to detect individual vortices in the superconductor. The idea is based on the scanning tunneling spectroscopy plotted here. Uh, if in the case of a normal tip and a normal uh, sample, you expect a linear IV characteristic, significant of a metallic uh, device, and the conduction, the no, conductance, which is the derivative of the current versus the voltage, is almost flat. In the case of a metallic tip, normal metal tip, and a superconductor, you expect a completely different behavior. Because of the pairing of the electrons, you will have no current flowing until the voltage between the tip and the sample reaches the gap delta value. So the conductance characteristics is completely different. In that case, you will have a zero conductance up to the delta and a big peak, according to the BCS theory. So in the case of uh, the presence of vortices, what you expect is a striking difference between the spectra which are acquired in the center of the vortices and the one which are acquired outside the vortices. In that case, the center of the, the course will present a characteristic which is non-superconducting, while the outside of the course will present superconducting characteristics. If you plot the spectra as a function of position over the sample, you can get and map out the, the vortex lattice. This is the illustration of how the vortices can be probed in the superconductor with a scanning tunneling microscope. Physics is not that simple. These are core states, I mean bound states inside the cores. The core represents a region where the superconducting character is lost, is destroyed. And when you try to inject particles in, inside the, the core of the vortex, you get bound states because of the presence of the uh, superconducting surrounding the, the core. And the signature of these bound, bound states can be measured with the scanning tunnel spectroscopy and appears as a big, broad, zero bias peak at low voltage. When you try measuring the spectra outside the cores in between the vortices, you get the typical superconducting characteristics with a peak at the position of the delta, the gap of the superconductor, and a reduced conductance at zero bias. Most of the techniques which are used to probe the, the vortices in superconductors are limited to very low fields in the millitesla uh, range because they are sensitive to the magnetic profile of the vortices, which is quite large in uh, most of the superconductors. With the scanning tunneling spectroscopy, we are sensitive to the cores of the vortices, which are very tiny. And so we are not limited to low fields, we can go to very high fields, like in this case 6 Tesla, where the image was acquired. But actually there is no limitation in the field, we can go up to the, the maximum uh, limitation of BC2, where the core starts to overlap. This is a physical property measurement system called PPMS. We can measure very different physical properties of materials. Many people around the world have this special system and so measurements can be compared very easily. With this system we can make hole probe measurements for example with this sample holder. This is a sample holder to make resistivity measurements. With this 
sample holder. We can even rotate samples in the cryostat in a magnetic field to uh, measure angular dependencies. Advantage of this PPMS system is that it can be uh, controlled remotely. Um, this cryostat is, is equipped with an uh, Helmholtz split coil magnet. So there are uh, two magnets um, um, and the magnetic field is horizontal. Um, so uh, which makes it easier to uh, make a, an isotropy measurements uh, when we rotate the sample uh, this way inside the cryostat. You can see we can make this uh, 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 rotation around this horizontal axis. Most goniometers will only support low current measurements for, for thin bridges of superconducting material. To measure a, a full width of a coated conductor, we need higher transport currents. This goniometer will support currents up to 300 amps. A large current can be applied to these copper blocks here. A sample like this can be mounted on the copper block here and current applied using sliding contacts here. The entire block can be rotated under the control of stepper motors. This measurement is for the critical current. It is measured for tapes, for Plisco tapes, Ipco tapes, to the measurements. Critical current anisotropy of high TC superconducting conductors, such as bismuth base and yttrium base, can be relatively easily characterized at liquid nitrogen temperature by direct cooling and rotation of magnetic field.